All right, let's talk about what would you do interview questions. More specifically, what would you do if you are a flight attendant working a flight and you have a passenger who refuses to wear his mask? What do you do? So during, this is a recap of study hall, (laughs) September 29th, 2020. This is the interview question that I tasked the study hall students with um, taking a little bit of time, preparing an answer, and then coming back, presenting their answer to the group. And then I did laser coaching for with each one of them to make sure that they were feeling the most confident and the most accurate uh, before they went on to study another interview question, probably. But this question is a newer question uh, to be uh, entering the ranks of very typical interview questions asked at flight attendant interviews. Now, up until now, we pretty much always got asked, what would you do if you're a flight attendant working a flight and you have a passenger who appears to be intoxicated, request another alcoholic beverage. So that's what we used to do and practice all the time. But now under our new current climate, including the fact that we're not even serving alcohol right now, and masks are mandatory, I imagine that this will be the new standard as far as interview questions go. Now, I don't know that for sure, but I'm, I'm going to guess. I think it's a pretty, it's a pretty good guess that this is going to be something that the airlines are going to be want to know because like before, when we dealt with one of our biggest things that we had to really deal with, with a lot of, uh, a lot of skill and a lot of, uh, couth and a lot of, uh, a lot of, a lot of a lot of a lot of stuff was uh, intoxicated passengers. And now it's going to be passengers refusing to wear masks. That's the thing that gets us on the news. That's the thing that is sort of the, um, the sticking point right now in aviation with our customers. So I think that this will be a very fair and probably a really good interview question to ask. Now, this question is part of the style of questioning that I like to call, tell me what you would do. Now, I have a whole video, I'll put the link, uh, it's a YouTube video, it's free, a whole video, I'll put the link in the comments um, about how to approach this this type of question. But really quick, um, I did recap for the students in study hall, so I'm gonna recap for you here how to approach these kinds of questions. When you're asked a what would you do type of question in an interview, the first thing that you have to do is ask yourself, is this a safety issue or is this a customer service issue? So for example, the alcohol one, safety, right? If if you have a customer who's intoxicated, that is definitely a safety issue. It's a uh, from a medical point of view for him, as well as we don't know how he's going to react. Kind of moving forward, it's definitely a safety issue. It is a safety guideline that you don't serve alcohol to someone who's already intoxicated, and that someone who is intoxicated is not allowed to fly. So if you don't know until you're up in the air, that's something that really has to be kind of controlled and regulated and uh, handled in a very uh, a very uh, f- like diplomatic but specific way. Now, let's say they ask you a question like, what would you do if you're working a flight and you have a passenger who rings his flight attendant call button and complains about a crying baby behind him? Now, is this a safety issue? Is there really anything unsafe going on here? Is there anything against regulation? There's not. This is just a straight up customer service issue. He is uncomfortable because of the the um, the the allowed behavior of someone near him, a crying baby. Babies are allowed to cry on planes. Um, actually, anyone's allowed to cry on a plane. It's not against the rules to cry on a plane. So um, if he's feeling that way though, this is a customer service issue. We still want to care for him, make him as comfortable as possible, and then also make the mother and the baby as comfortable as possible too. But there's no real clear and specific guidelines as to what has to be done to get to a certain destination. What you're doing is just providing your special brand and flavor of customer service, hopefully to turn the situation around. So that's the first thing that you do. You ask yourself, is this safety or is this customer service related? So the question that we're doing today, which is what would you do if you were working a flight as a flight attendant and you have a passenger who refuses to wear his mask? So what would you do? Um, First question, is that safety or is that customer service? I'll let you answer. Type it in the comments. Safety 
or customer service. He won't wear his mask, safety or customer service. I feel like I should sing the Jeopardy song, but I won't. Probably because YouTube would take this down. I have a feeling that's protected music. All right, so it's safety. Is that what you thought? Safety, right? Because why do we wear a mask? Why, why do we have to wear a mask? We wear a mask on the plane to protect ourselves and to protect other people around us, right? It's a safety issue. It's also a very clear company regulation that you have to wear a mask. Now, um, as of this recording, it is not an FAR, meaning it's not a federal aviation regulation uh, set forth by the FAA, but I know that the AFA, the Association of Flight Attendant Union, this is a lot of letters. The AFA is working really hard to get that kind of, to get that change, to get that instituted um, as an FAR. But it's, even though it's currently not an FAR, it is a company regulation and it's a safety issue. So because it's a safety issue, we have to move straight towards a specific goal, which is having the customer comply with the regulation that they are being asked to comply with, wearing his mask. Now, there's a couple different ways to do it. We're gonna kind of assume that we're probably up in the air because otherwise, the flight attendant wouldn't have full responsibility to handle the situation. She could bring in the gate agent, the customer service representative, the ground security officer, maybe even the captain in some instances to help with enforcement. But once you are up in the air, it's just you, girl. That's it. You and your flying partners. Or if you're on a 50-seater, just you. So what are we going to do? What are we going to do? What are some of the things that you could do? You know, if you've worked in customer service, which you probably have, um, and you worked with people, having a light attitude, maybe even a funny attitude, if that's your personality, can really help to relieve some of the tension around this. Um, another thing that we talked about is, uh, I told a story that uh, when I was in high school, my mom was the principal of my high school, and we went, I went to a private Christian school and I had to wear uniforms, not dress code, like full uniform, plaid skirt, whole night, all right? So we had to wear these white button-up shirts. And some of the girls, like the cool girls, they would wear like these lacy camisoles, white camisoles underneath their shirts and then unbutton the shirt so like the little lacy camisole would like show. Um, and I remember my mom, the principal, <laughs> would always go up to them and say, and like whisper kind of discreetly to them, your underwear is showing. I don't know if you can hear me whisper, but she would say, your underwear is showing, you need to button up a little bit. And so they, it like she would sort of, she knew, she knew what them girls were doing. She knew what they were doing. She knew, she is not stupid. She knew, but she kind of gave them the benefit of the doubt. And she acted like um, that there was a possibility that it was an accident, that they weren't on purpose showing off the lacy camisoles in their uniform and you know what they did every single time oh no yes ma'am miss sumner button it right back up so that is actually a good way to kind of start out is to not go in hard okay so don't go in hard also this is interview world right we're in interview world we are not actually on the plane at the end of a 16 hour day nobody will wear their freaking mask all day and you're exhausted we are in perfect interview world. This is your chance to show off the brilliance of your customer service skills. All of the ideas that you think would maybe work or that would maybe even save the customer relationship, this is when you show those off in perfect interview world. So to answer this, you could say something like, well, if I had a passenger who wouldn't wear his mask, um, I know sometimes we forget to maybe pull it back up or sometimes they slip down if they're a little big. So the first thing that I would do is I would probably give him the benefit of the doubt and say, excuse me, sir, it looks like your mask has slipped down a little bit or don't forget to hook your mask back on now that you're done eating. And I would kind of maybe give him the benefit of the doubt where he didn't feel like I was telling him what to do, but more like I was, I was just reminding him or helping him to do what he's supposed to do. That's one great way to do it. Another way that you could do it is you could just say, um, you could say something along the lines like, sir, um, I noticed that your mask isn't on. It's the company's regulation that you wear at any time that you're not eating. So I would love to see that Texas Cowboy Pride fully 
covering your nose and mouth if you wouldn't mind. And maybe say something about their mask if they have something on their mask like that. Uh, you know, even if it's something that is sort of negative. Like, I saw a mask on the flight last week that said something to the effect of I'm wearing this because of force, not because of fear. So if he didn't have his mask on, you could say something like, um, excuse me, sir, I know that wearing a mask is, is really, really makes you uncomfortable, but I would really appreciate if you were to wear your mask because it is our company guideline. And, um, the flight is almost over, so if you could just keep your mask on, it would I would really appreciate it. So instead of launching into the health of those around you or the health and safety of those around you, especially if you feel like someone doesn't think that it's really keeping anyone safe, they really think it's not working, then you're not going to be able to convince them the same way we do with the seatbelt, which is for your safety and the safety of everyone around you. If the person thinks that the mask is not keeping them or the people around them safe, then that's not gonna be a good way to convince them. But just sort of nicely asking them, um, reminding them that it's company policy, or lightening the mood and assuming that maybe they forgot are great strategies. Now, especially in interview world, we do not want to jump straight to, well, I would tell the passenger, please comply and wear your mask correctly over your nose and mouth or you will be removed from this flight and placed on the no-fly list. That is not the direction we want to go, right? Because, first of all, that's really not great customer service. If you're just going to go straight to a threat, it's really not great customer service. And we're in interview world. And in interview world, we're showing off our customer service skills. Now, on the airplane... You know, maybe you're threatening. I don't know. <laughs> maybe you are. But in interview world, in perfect interview world, use this as an opportunity to show off the genius of your customer service skills. So I hope that you found that helpful. Um, again, this was a recap of our study hall session back in uh, September 29th, 2020. Um, if you would like to connect more, which I would love. If you would love it, I would love it. Um, you can join the Flight Attendant Career Connection Facebook group, or you can learn and connect with me at www.abbyunger.org backslash F-A-C-C. Can't wait to connect and learn with you more. Bye.